Hello everyone, we're going to follow up from last week and we're going to dive deeper into learning about brain-derived neutrophic factor. So um, we talked about last week how with exercise, brain-derived neutrophic factor increases. Okay, to begin with, we're going to draw a schematic diagram of the brain. So here it is. Um, so, yeah, it's not exactly perfect, but you get the idea. Within the brain, there are three main areas that are responsible for um, food intake and energy regulation to ensure that there is the appropriate energy status within our body. So, let's have a quick look at those three different areas. So, one of them is the brainstem. So there are multiple spots um, or nuclei within the brainstem that play a role in food intake and energy expenditure. Um, there's also the reward system which is found through um, various parts of the brain. Um, in particular the ventral tegmental um, area which is around here and uh, in that area there are neurons which contain dopamine. And those neurons have been shown to express um, brain-derived neutrophic factor. Brain-derived neutrophic factor has also been found in the areas that are responsible for food intake and energy expenditure. From the ventral tegmental area, um, the neurons, the dopamine neurons, will project to other areas of the reward system. So, for example, the nucleus accumbens, which is about here, and to the frontal cortex over here. So th that's responsible for the hedonic regulation of eating. So like emotional eating and things like that. Finally, the last area of the brain, which has been shown to um, be responsible for regulating food intake and energy expenditure is the hypothalamus. And the hypothalamus is around here in the brain. Today, because we don't have much time, we're just going to focus on the hypothalamus. We're going to zoom in and look at the hypothalamus more, more closely. So let's delete the brain. Okay, so if this is the hypothalamus, there are several areas four areas within the hypothalamus that have been shown to express brain-derived neutrophic factor. And those areas are also associated, like I mentioned before, with food intake and energy expenditure. So I will, so the first area is the dorsal medial nucleus. So dorsal medial nucleus. You have also the ventral medial nucleus. Ventral medial nucleus. You have the paraventricular nucleus, so PVN, paraventricular nucleus. And the last one is the lateral hypothalamic area. So that will be here, lateral hypothalamic area. Now, each one of these areas is a group of neurons, and they have been labeled according to the location within the hypothalamus. Another area that is important is the arcuate nucleus, and that's further down in the hypothalamus. So that's arc. The arcuate nucleus is different to the remainder of the hypothalamus in that it is not protected by the blood-brain barrier. So like the name suggests, the blood-brain barrier is a barrier that stops toxic molecules or unwanted molecules from entering the brain. It is protecting it from neuronal damage, neuro neurons dying. So in essence, the arcuate nucleus is basically acting like a sensor. It's detecting what's happening within the rest of the body, in the periphery. What's happening in the circulations? What hormones are present in the circulation? So, well, this is a schematic diagram of the circulation. So you would have blood flowing through here and the arcuate nucleus will be able to detect 
what the energy status is of the body by um, getting um, an idea of the hormones that are found within the plasma. We know from our last week's video that um, exercise um, results in an increase in brain-derived neurotrophic factor in the circulation. So if we have a person here and they're running and they're very happy, there you go, um, they're running their brain revived neurotrophic factor will increase in the circulation. Um, so where exactly does this brain derived neurotrophic factor come from? Does it come from the brain? Does it come from muscles? Well, the answer is that no one really knows. There are certainly some um, suggestions as to where it might be coming from. And one of them is through platelets. So platelets, which are found within the blood, have been shown to express brain-derived neurotrophic factor. And they have also been shown to secrete it into the circulation. So I guess platelets could well be responsible for this increase. Another possibility is endothelial cells. So endothelial cells are found in the lining of the vessels. Okay, these cells have also been shown to express and to secrete brain-derived neurotrophic factor. There are other tissues within the periphery that have been shown to express brain-derived neurotrophic factor. An example is the fat cells, adipocytes. Um, beta cells from the pancreas. So B cells, pancreas. And um, I'll just fix the camera a little bit. Let's see, that's, I think that's a bit better. And also muscle, skeletal muscle. So from as this person's running, um, the skeletal muscles are contracting and they also have brain-derived neurotrophic factor. Now, these other tissues have not been shown to contribute to the increase in brain-derived neurotrophic factor yet. It may be that with later research, this is actually the case. But at the moment, it doesn't look like that's the case. For example, in skeletal muscle, an increase within the muscle fibers has been observed of brain-derived neurotrophic factor. However, what they have noticed is that there is a change in the type of metabolism that occurs within these fibers. And that is, it appears that there's more beta oxidation, so more fat is being used. There's an increase in glucose utilization, in addition to an increase in insulin sensitivity. In terms of the adipocytes and beta cells, I want you to remember, we talked about those types of tissues before. Um, so the adipocytes, they release leptin, the hormone which makes you feel full, satisfied, and so on. Leptin would be secreted into the circulation and it would be detected by the aqueous nucleus to make you feel full and satisfied and increase your energy expenditure. Similarly, the beta cells of the pancreas, um, as you probably remember, release um, insulin into the circulation. Uh, similarly, insulin is gonna act in the same location to cause a similar effect. Okay, um, so the increase in brain-derived neurotrophic factor acts on the arcuate nucleus. There are receptors for brain-derived neurotrophic factor here. How, even though there is not a lot of receptors there, there are some. Now, within the arcuate nucleus, there is a couple of populations of neurons. So one population of neurons, um, which innovate these other, I'm just going to put it like a box here. It in, innovates these areas within the hypothalamus. And these neurons are called POMC and also CART. Now, these names are just very long and you possibly don't need to know them. So, POM is basically pro opio melocortin. 
and card is cocaine and amphetamine regulated trans skin and um, so the reason they call that is because these neurons there's a nucleus um, express these proteins similarly there's another group of neurons in the arcuate nucleus however I might do them in a different color so these nuclear nu neurons though however are called neuropeptide Y and agouti related peptide so NPY and AGRP the reason again that they call this is because that protein is expressed within those neurons now so these are two separate pathways that are acti activating or affecting different areas within the hypothalamus if for example we activate this pathway what will result is a increase in energy expenditure expenditure and a decrease in food intake okay if on the other hand we activate the other pathway within the hypothalamus then that's going to result in hunger It's going to result in um, decreased energy expenditure. Expenditure. Um, de increase um, food intake. And any behaviors associated with finding food. Okay, so brain derived neurotrophic factor activates in activates this one and inhibits that one. So when brain derived neurotrophic factor, you're more likely to increase your energy expenditure and decrease your food intake. This was also shown in these muscle fibers where you were utilizing. It appears that you're utilizing more fat and more glucose. And um, so I guess overall, um, the take home message is that um, when you just looking at a single hormone or trying to alter a single hormone is not always necessarily going to give you the um, result that you want because there's always other hormones acting on the same pathway as we mentioned before, for example, there is um, leptin and insulin that are being released and they act to activate this pathway here. On the other hand, you might have ghrelin in the circulation because your stomach is empty. And so that will be acting on this pathway here, the agouti related peptide and neuropeptide Y pathway to make you hungry and go um, and eat more. The other thing to note is that these neurons will also inhibit this pathway so when this pathway is activated this one is inhibited with that I'll leave you for this week and I hope that you enjoyed this and next week we'll look at another hormone and how it's affected by exercise and don't forget to like and subscribe down below